Like many of you, I have watched and rewatched Necrit's interview with the Riot MMO team many times. But there is one quote that has just kept me up late into the night every single night since. We actually have an engineer that worked on the Guild Wars 2 and designed a lot of the mega server work. So I needed to find who this person was, what their experience on the Guild Wars 2 mega servers was, and most importantly, what lessons could be brought over to the future of the Riot MMO. So I got digging and well, there was no one on my list that had previously worked at Guild Wars 2 in really any capacity, huh? So I dug a little further, eventually stumbling on a principal software engineer in R&D by the name of Samuel Lortan. Samuel has previous work at ArenaNet as a server programmer where he in his own words, would design and implement their mega server system, where he would aim to provide a better in-game social environment for the players by gaining better control and a higher level of stability. They would also utilize data-rich algorithms to create meaningful social groups within their various servers. Okay, cool, we found our guy. But as I dug deeper, I began to realize that this guy had a deep focus on introducing social aspects back into the MMORPG genre, something that had been previously lost in many of the more recent MMOs, given their extensive use of channels, sharding, and breaking players up into different phases, utilizing these mega servers. But what is it about the Guild Wars 2 servers that are so unique? And during my research, I was able to find an article about their mega server system how it's implemented and what they do to better connect players in a system that seemingly tries to pull them apart. Now, before we dig too deep into this article, I do want to mention that the article is written by Samuel himself, so I think it's a pretty good reflection of what his thought process is around mega servers, or at least what they were back in April of 2014. The other interesting aspect of this was that Samuel was hired at the exact same time that VJ was hired to start working on an MMO over at Riot Games. I think that's a little too much of a coincidence to think that they weren't both working together on these MMOs, even if they were ultimately not released. So what does Samuel think the benefits for a mega servers are? Well, the mega server system means you won't encounter overflow maps anymore. All maps are now created equal and the system tries very hard to always make a meaningful choice for you by keeping an appropriate number of maps open while also maintaining a large population in the area so this massively multiplayer online world still feels massively multiplayer and online. I think to sum it up, the biggest benefit of this new system is that you'll always find other players to adventure within in an open world, no matter what time of day it is. So as the populations go up and down throughout a day or even month, multiple maps will open and close, giving you a variable amount of maps and maintaining the ideal population for both player interaction as well as server stability. Oftentimes, the problem we find in these systems, though, is that they will create new maps and separate players negatively. I know personally, there's been times where I'll log into a game and I'll run out to go find my friend because I know he's playing in the same area. And as I get into the zone, he's not there because he got put into a different map of the same area. And that just feels clunky, cumbersome, and definitely does not promote good social aspects within an MMORPG. And this is where Guild Wars 2 and more importantly, Samuel decided to come up with a solution for this problem. The Guild Wars 2 mega server system will aggregate data about you as a player, like your party, guild, language, home server, and the map copy where people that you may like to play with can be found. Using all of this data, it will rank all possible versions of a given map by attributing a score to each one of them. And then it will place you in the map with the highest score, which ultimately is the one that you'll most likely have a better experience playing within. Now, within the Guild Wars 2 system, each one of these had separate weights and could be adjusted based off of what the game developers thought would be a more accurate representation for their player base. This was something that I found super cool and as an enjoyer of 
Guild Wars 2, I was surprised to be learning about in 2023, nearly 10 years after they posted this. With all that said though, I'm really excited to see that Samuel has now joined the Riot Games team and has been developing server technology for them since all the way back in 2016. All of this was being done too under their research and development umbrella, meaning he was probably most likely given a lot of areas to experiment and better own this craft. So let's talk about what this might mean for the Riot Games MMORPG moving forward. First off, I think it's probably safe to assume that there will be some form of mega server within the Riot MMO, because I think gone are the days where everyone is split up on their own dedicated servers. Sure, they did have some great benefits as far as social aspects within the games. And like Necrit said, if you are on a dedicated server and you behave, badly people know it about you the negatives to dedicated servers greatly outweigh what positives you can get from using a mega server you don't have to worry about queue times it greatly increases the chance to run into other players within the world because let's be honest not every single zone is going to have a similar population level and it also adds a level of scalability to greater increased stability of the servers themselves anyways but i also don't think that the riot MMO is going to do a direct copy pasta of the Guild Wars 2 mega servers. Firstly, they were released nearly 10 years ago. There has been a ton of developments technologically as well as philosophically around algorithms and how to better connect people. All of that said though, I think Samuel's interest in building social systems, especially when connected with how server technology will work, is probably the greatest news we can hear regarding the Riot MMO. Cause I don't know about you, but all of these kind of weird mobile speculation, I was afraid we were going to get some kind of just portals queuing in through looking for group type systems. And I think they definitely are going a direction to better connect players within the open world. And that's just just music to my ears, so I'm very excited to see where they take that in the next 5 to 20 years. Either way, let me turn the microphone over to you guys. What do you think this means for the Riot MMO? Do you even think they're going to do a mega server or are they going to go with the old school dedicated servers? If you made it this far, I'm going to be going deeper and deeper into Riot MMO territory the closer and closer we get to release. Whether that's 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, every day is a step closer in my eyes, so let's just keep the hype up and enjoy what the future of this project may be. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. I know about 70% of you just listen to every single one of my videos. You keep coming back for more. Just hit that subscribe button. It makes me happy and it makes me keep making these videos. As always, my name is Spun and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.